Hey, you guys. Welcome back to the Pink Butterfly. It's your girl, Lady Sylvia. How you doing? So, today, I thought I would come to you with a Car Chronicles video. I just got back from church, um, and I just didn't feel like going inside. The lighting is pretty good for a garage, and everybody is inside and making noise, and they just gonna ruin my mood and get all in the way. So, I figured that I would make this video in the car. So today I want to talk about those faith killers or those people who try to attack your faith. And it may not necessarily be like your personal faith and how strong you feel in your walk with God, but there's some people that will try, that will try. There are some people that will try to attack the very God and Jesus that you serve. What are you talking about, Sylvia? Let me tell you. So there's this man that I am Facebook friends with. And he, we used to be um, co-workers when I was in the Army. He was my supervisor. So, of course, through modern technology and through um, Facebook, he's found me. My neighbor walking the dog, y'all, and he see me sitting in the car talking to myself. He think I'm crazy. Anyway, um, so we've been faith Facebook friends for the last couple years. Well, first he started out by, because I, I don't make my faith any, um, it's not a hidden secret. It's not something that people have to wonder about. I'm going to tell you, like probably 90% of the people, I'm a Christian. I believe in God. I believe in Jesus Christ. That is what it is, point blank, blank and the period. So anyway, he started out asking me questions about the Bible and about salvation and about God. And I tried to answer those questions as best as I can. Now, I'm no Bible scholar. You know, I used to many, 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 many moons ago. I used to teach Bible study. I used to teach um, Sunday school. And I was over the singles ministry at one of, you know, a church that I was a part of. But like I said, that was a long time ago. But even before all of that, I studied the word just to study for myself. So I tried to give him what I knew. And then, you know, I, I hate for somebody to ask me a question and I don't know the answer or I can't adequately explain it. So I tried to give him what I knew and then, you know, gave him the, the scriptures or the Google page or whatever, where he can probably find the answer better because I can read the exact same scripture that you read and interpret it a totally different way because of where I am in my life, because of what I've been through in my life, because of what I'm doing right now. You know, Jesus wept can mean one thing to me and mean something totally different to you just because on where we are in our life. So anyway, um, you know, I tried to explain different questions that he had as best as I could, but then he would rebut with, well, I found this, well, I found that. Well, Jesus was just a man. He wasn't, you know, the Messiah. Or, um, how, you know, how can you believe in a God that will allow famine and hunger and murder and strife and this, that, and the third? You know, so I tried to explain to him, that was never God's intention for all of this to take place. But we do have to be accountable for what we do and what we say and we just because there is murder and famine in the land we can't just put it all off on God we are responsible for some things too we have free will well for about a week or two he never asked me anything else I didn't hear anything else about his quest for salvation child this thing then went completely left now he no longer believes in God and I'm like did I do this but, you know, I was like, I just want to make sure that I completely turned you away from God and Jesus. Or were you teeter-tottering on the fence to begin with? Because, Lord, if you tell me I didn't turn you away from God, I'm about done with myself. But he was like, no, I did some research. And, you know, I did all this looking on the Internet and Google and this, that, and the third. And I've come to realize that there is no Jesus. There is no God. He went on to tell me that, you know, the Bible is man-made, man-written, blah, blah, blah. He doesn't believe in it, blah, blah, blah. Hey, look, man, to each his own. You know, 
I'm not here to condemn, nor am I here to save. That's not my place on this earth. My purpose is to raise my kids and do what God has called me to do to the best of my ability. I have no heaven or hell to put anybody in. So, you know, it's like every day, though, it's a different attack on spirituality and on faith itself. You know, every day he posts something on Facebook about how God isn't real, how Jesus isn't real, how the Bible isn't real. Every day, how we're stupid as Christians and we need to wake up and realize that we have fell privy to the biggest hocus pocus trick on earth because God and Jesus and the Bible are all false. And I stop answering. I stop defending. I stop everything because there's a scripture that says, do not cast your pearls before swine. Sylvia translated means there is no reason in the world that I'm going to try to convince you of what you don't believe in. Let me put it to you like this. I hate peas. Those little green balls, peas, a lot of I hate them things. Lord have mercy. It's a couple things that the devil got away with and green peas was one of them. They are horrible to my soul. Now, what I'm not going to do is allow you to convince me that no matter what the nutritional value, that I should have peas and peas are good for me. No devil in hell going to tell me that I'm going to have to eat these green peas. I don't like them. So I'm not going to constantly convince him yes there is a god yes there is a jesus yes the book is the bible is man written but it's god inspired i'm not doing all of that to each his own you have to answer for your thoughts your beliefs your actions just like i do on the day of reckoning with god but i tell y'all every day it's like draining because he posts something that is contrary to the word of god and i almost kind of feel like he low-key doing it in spite like he not tagging me or nothing but i low-key feel like he like mm, just what you said about your god let me put this out there this what you said about the word mm, let me put this out there wherever he find these teachings and youtube videos that goes against everything that he now does not believe in and i started to delete him because it's really working on my nerves and you know I was having a conversation with my girlfriend and she was like, don't delete him. You continue to post what you post on Facebook. And if he want to delete you, then he deletes you. But let him continue to see the goodness and the mercy of God. And I was like, you know what? That's what I was leaning to. I'm going to let him continue to see what thus saith the Lord and all the wonderful, magical, just brilliant things that God is doing in my life and everybody else's life that I know. And even if you're not having such a wonder wonderful miraculous time in god right now keep living it's coming this life is filled of hills and valleys so appreciate it when you're on the mountaintop because the valley is coming and it's in the valley when you look to the hills from which cometh your health and it's when you're on the mountaintop that you still got to look to the hill for which cometh your health so you can maintain while you're on the mountaintop because you're going up and down up and down such as life but i just wanted to then he came for my pastor oh. Now, don't get me wrong. I do believe that men and women of God who preach the word, they are no better or no worse than us everyday people. Because then they do, I mean, unless you've been a minister, you do not know what those people go through. But he's going to post something on Facebook about my minister, my pastor, my bishop. Oh, yes, sir. a lot of people don't like to say where they go to church. I it, well, I will say it, scream it loud and proud. I am a member, a tithe-paying member of the Potter's House of Dallas under the direction and leadership of none other than Bishop Thomas Dexter Jakes, T.D. Jakes. How about that? This man put on Facebook, he came for my pastor. And I was like, oh, now I got to come for you. Now, pastors are no better than us they put their clothes on their pants on one leg at a time just like us but what i will not do as a member of that place where i pay my tithes and get my spiritual feeding is allow you to spread lies about the man of god now that's what i'm not fixing to sit here and do i'm not gonna let you spread lies about me or my family or my friends i'm not gonna let you spread lies about the man that i sit up under you know and he's like oh he just taking y'all money and he doing this that and the third when was the last time you been to the potter's house? 
Never. Mm, okay. This post that you posting is not even from Bishop Jakes. People always take Bishop Jakes and other other big ministers use their name and create fake Facebook posts and put all these posts out. If you have never been to the Potter's house, if you never been a member of the Potter's house, if you never saw what the Potter's house does for not only the DFW community, but the church members and the schools and the wells and the clinics and the hospitals in Africa, sir, if you've never been a member you ain't got nothing to say. If you've never went up to a bishop and say, I need prayer, don't say me nothing. If you never went up to an usher and say, I need prayer, don't tell me nothing. If you never went to God on yourself, by yourself, for yourself, and asked God to help you with this, that, and the third, don't tell me nothing about mine. Now, I play about a lot of things, but I don't play about my children, my money, my man, when I get one, and now I don't play about my pastor because, and he is human just like us, but I will say this, if somebody is spreading falsehoods and lies about the man or the woman of God that you serve, then who's stupid? You or them, because you're the one who's sitting up under them. So if they're such a horrible person, why are you going to the church that they have been called to minister over? Why are you a part of the flock if you're not going to defend the lies that's being told about that person? So I said all that to say, y'all, don't let no devil in hell tell you, convince you, or try to irritate you that you should not serve God and love God and do the best that you can do. Because I guarantee you, before, before it's all said and done, Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Now, you either can call on him while you're on this side of glory or you're going to call on him with your eyes lifted up from the pits of hell. Either way, I'm trying to worry worried about me. I'm trying to worry about make sure I'm getting there. I'm trying to worry about my son and my daughter getting there. I don't have time to play reindeer games with this little man. They didn't let Rudolph play reindeer games and I'm not fixing to play reindeer games with him about the God I serve. And I understand what it is. You slick enemy, you thought that you was going to give me, me, to beg down about the God I serve? The devil is a lie. So I, people, know God for yourself, know the word for yourself, and be rooted and grounded and stand firm and flat-footed against the enemy when he tries to come against you or the God you serve. And if they laugh at you, they ridicule you, they don't like you, they talk about you, they talked about Jesus. But I tell you what, I'd rather you laugh at me and talk about me and say that I'm crazy now than I'd be sitting with you as a partner in hell. How about that? Y'all have a blessed day and I will catch y'all in the next video. Stay rooted, grounded, and firm in your faith with God. Even when it looks nasty and crazy, God got you. Peace.